Welcome to Interfaith Spiritual Center Worldwide. We are not here by chance. We are here by divine appointment. We heard the call and we answered. And to our viewing audience, if you tuned in at this moment, there's something here for you. And as we join together as community, the two or three gathered together for a higher purpose, there the I am presence is in the midst of us. It's where the whole becomes greater than the sum of its parts. Energistic mind of God. This is why I love community. And that African, that beautiful African quotation, you know, I just got back from Africa three weeks ago, speaking to 25,000 students and faculty in such energy. And I love that statement. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together because there is an energy that arises in the midst of us. And that energy of community, where we are supported, we are loved, and we are acknowledged. And that's why I believe so deeply in community, and I keep doing this work almost for 40 years now on October 12th. So as we come together today, we're going to look at the art of balance. We're gonna look at achieving balance. And I think it's a huge thing for us in the West. And it's really interesting, when we're in Nigeria, uh, there's such a thing called Nigerian time. So they'll tell us to be there at 9, and we're all there, and we're gathered, and there's all the students. And, you know, I'm sort of looking at my watch, and then, you know, it's 9.15 and 9.30, 9.45, 10. And, you know, this at first was a real issue for me uh, because... We're traveling, it takes 24 hours to get there. We get there, we need to adjust to the nine hours you know, ahead of us, all of that. So what I did to get on the solution level, so I wouldn't you know, have my fe feathered, feathers ruffled that uh, they weren't on time, they call it Nigerian time. I mean, we just freak out here you know, with, with that kind of consciousness, but it works for them at the university. And I started going two days before the conference started so I could rest. So I just stay in my room and I rest. And the most charming, the sisters that are there, and they knock on the door and say, Oh, Dr. Sharon, we have your meal, and it's right here. And they bring the meal to the room, and it's just so sweet and wonderful. And by the time the conference starts, I feel rested. And then I just start gathering you know, around the energy of the students and asking them what they're majoring in. And so that... I don't feel out of balance. There are things that we can do because in our culture, you know, achieving and success and, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, have you heard of the law of attraction? <laughs> Ernest Holmes wrote it in 1926. <laughs> it's nothing new. The law of attraction, the law of correlation, and that as we correlate our thoughts with that dynamic that we want to experience, it's the peace that passes all understanding. I call it the peace of God. That peace that allows us to come from that inner knowingness that all is well. Is it falling apart around us? Me. But energetically, it's falling together at a higher level. And sometimes things have to fall apart so they can fall together. I want you to know, my, I have a very large yard and I'm having two more sprinkler valves put in to correlate the water. Everything's torn out. Somebody said, my gosh, what happened here? Everything that, you know, just dig all these holes and everything is like three giant gophers in my yard. And I said, well, you know, next week I'll have two additional water valves and we can do things in a more balanced way so I won't have to hand water because when one hand waters, one tends to overwater. So I just got on the solution level with that. And to be in balance with what's going on in California, I want to be responsible, the ability to respond. And as we come together looking at the five key action areas, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, relationally, and financially, beginning at the spiritual area. And in the 70s, I used to teach self-image psychology at various universities and colleges. And I had this uh, diagram of a five-pointed five star. And at the top is spiritual, then mental-emotional at the other point, and then physical, relational, and financial. And when you create a circle around that star and realize that it all begins spiritually, moves into the energy of the mental and emotional, and when we're out of balance, we are feeling stressed, we're in future time, we're feeling fear, 
all of those emotions that come up for us. I am in perfect peace, Jesus said. My mind is stayed on thee. And when Buddha said, it's the law of non-attachment to be not attached to the things of this world, he recognized that all suffering came from man, woman, looking outside themselves instead of being at peace and judging all the things out there. I love the wonderful story about the Zen master. And there was a very famous samurai warrior, and he wanted to know some of the vital questions of life, and he found the, the very famous Zen master, Hakuin. And he went to him, and he said, I want to know about heaven and hell. And he said, well, who are you? And he said, I am the samurai, the great warrior. And he said, you are a great warrior. You come to me. You're brutish. You, you, you uh, kill people. You do all of these atrocities. And you're coming to me, asking me about heaven and hell. And at that moment, the samurai unsheathed his sword, and he got ready for the kill. And at that moment, the Zen master said, that's hell. At that moment... He returned the sword initially. He bowed down to the Zen master. He was so overwhelmed and so overcome with the Zen master who was going to really risk his life at that moment. And as he bowed down, he said, that's heaven. That state of grace where we have enlightenment. We have a moment of awareness. When people asked Buddha who he was and they thought he was an angel and a great God, he said, no, I am awake. When we are awake to the moment, we realize the point of power is always in the present moment. If we're going to be in balance, it's not about future time. And how many of us talk about all the property we had and we could have sold it for this, that. I mean, I lived in Coronado on the ocean. And my daughter said, mother, I can't believe they sold that house for... Two point million dollars. What did you sell it for? And I said, six hundred, six hundred thousand. I said, but it's all relative, isn't it? It's all relative. And when we have things that come into our lives energetically, and we think of the good old days and how it coulda, shoulda, and woulda been, that does not serve us. We're out of balance when we're living in the past or we're looking in the unborn future. It's about being in balance at this moment. It's about opening the space to allow God to do what God does best by means of us. And I really feel the ground of being is love. It's unconditional love. Do we agree with everybody? No. We want everybody in our personal space? No. But there is a consciousness within them. There is what the wonderful quantum physicists call the God particle. So that is what we unite with, that God particle. Sometimes it's very difficult to get to that place where we can see the God expressing. Uh, my massage therapist, one of them, Kim Brandy Baldwin, who's uh, been giving me massages for six years, uh, we went and met at the environmental fair. And then from there, uh, Rebecca Clark, who does Barbra Streisand better than Barbara does Barbara, was singing at Legends. And so Kim and she are best friends, and they live next door to each other. And she goes, well, you know, let's run over to Legends. So we ran over to Legends, and there she is. And she goes, oh, fantastic. I'm, you know, she did her Barbara thing, so happy we were there. And we got to sit, you know, real close. And there were, like, these five people over on this side, you know, in the front. And they were just talking and talking loud and drinking loud and, you know, just, and she's singing this really wonderful song, and, and uh, Kim goes, oh, this is just so unbelievable. I said, in this state, yes, this is what I call unbelievable. Not when good stuff happens. When bad stuff happens, mm -hmm. to me, that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Not the good stuff. So he said, yes, it is unbelievable. And they're just carrying on raucously. And so Rebecca said, I'm going to do a special song for Kim. And it was such a beautiful song. It was a Barbra Streisand song. And so Kim goes over and she said, could you be respectful, please, because she's doing this special song. And they said, oh, mind your own business. <laughs> and then he gave the half peace sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, figure it out, right? So I said, you know what? They're drunk. They're disorderly. 
let's send them light. And I just said, oh, thank you so much, you know, assuming the virtue. And uh, she sang the song, and it was so beautiful, and we just tuned them out. We tuned them. I mean, you're a performer, Fleet. You know how that happens. So we tuned them out. And pretty soon, you know, they got quieter. And she was just singing so beautifully. And I thought, you know, it's so interesting that we can feel so spiritual and so grounded, or we can be meditating in our yard, and the chainsaw starts with the people cutting down palm fronds, you know, disturbing that energy, and we feel suddenly out of balance. I believe those things are there to give us a groundedness to go within, to be so firmly grounded in the truth that nothing and no thing can disturb our peace of mind, that we draw a circle and we include that activity. One of my favorite stories is about a, mo a mother who went in and her little girl, she's four years old and she's got two apples in her hands and her mother said, oh, can mommy have an apple? And she looked at the apples and she took a bite real quick and then she looked at the other one and she took a bite out of that real quick. And mommy tried to not look terribly disappointed, but felt, you know, oh my gosh. And then she gave it to her and she goes, oh, take this one, mommy, it's sweeter. Okay? It's not always the way it appears. Take this one. It's the sweeter one. When we don't have that knee-jerk reaction of judging things outside of ourselves, realizing that everything is unfolding, and even when there is rudeness and there's stuff going on, to bless it, to send it light, we don't like it, we don't agree with it, but we draw the larger circle and we include it. So we our equanimity, our state of balance, we don't give our power away to these things outside of us. That I am in perfect peace. My mind is stayed on thee. My mind is stayed on what is life-giving. My mind is stayed on that recognition that I bow before the energy of the universe that is there for me. That is heaven. And hell is when we look outside of ourselves and we feel like we have to strike out. We're going to get our revenge. Remember the... <laughs> it's so archaic now. But it, it, it's a quote by Albert Einstein. Is that when you, you know, you're upset and, and you haven't forgiven, it's like you taking the poison and expecting them to die. Right? It's so true. So we free ourselves of those grudges and that, the wounds. And I believe in the sacred wound. I believe that we go through our experiences. I believe that we come out on the other side. And out of that wounding, we have something to offer in a profound way to others. That's what the whole 12-step program is about. That's what the recognition of realizing I walk that path. I've come out on the other side of it. And when I came into metaphysics, very insecure at 21 years old, from a, a domestic violence and an alcoholic home, this made so much sense. And that we choose our parents, we choose our experiences to grow and unfold. And a part of us, the lower self, says, I didn't choose this. I didn't ask to be born. Yes, you did. <laughs> you did. You know, we, on a deep, deep level, we choose when we're going to enter this earth plane. And on another deep level, we choose when we're going to leave. And it's not good and it's not bad. Death is not good, it's not bad. It's an incident. It's the recognition that we've let go and let God do what God does best at that moment. Death is not extinguishing the light, it's turning off the lamp because dawn has come for each and every one of us at that moment. That the veil is very thin. Patrick Harrington talked about that Wednesday night. The veil is very thin. And that the loved ones are in the energy field. And as we recognize that, then that deep yearning, and I, someone said when my husband passed away, uh, when do you get over it? I said, you never get over it. You get on with it. And when you get on with it, the healing follows. Action with intention. And to remain in balance when there's so many demands and so much going on in our day and age is really remarkable. And I don't know how many of you remember in 1974, there was a man named Philippe Petit. Petit. And they called him Man on a Wire. And he took a wire between the former 
New York Trade Buildings, Trade Center, and walked across it. He had a pole, and he took him 45 minutes to walk across it. Of course, you know, the district attorney of New York was suing, and all these people were suing, but there he was. And someone said, why do you do this? And he says, you know, it's not about the why. It's about that it's there for me to do. And I remember a young woman named Ann Shelley who said, why is a butterfly loose in the universe? It's not about why. And he, on this man on a wire, balancing with the pole. And he said, how do you do it? He said, do you ever think about falling? He said, never, never. I not no negativity in my space. I see only the wire and the end my destination. So that was such a, and there was a documentary that went out. And I thought, each of us in life, we're like Philippe Petit. We're like the man on the wire. And we're doing this amazing balancing act. And we have a destination, we can see the destination. But the minute we look down, oh my God, what happened? What happened to the apostles in the boat when they looked down? They sank. Yet Jesus went out calmly, walking on the waves of emotional turbulence, and said, oh ye of little faith. It's your faith that makes you whole. We can walk on the waves of that emotional turbulence, of whatever is going on in our life at any given moment, we can move through that and be in balance and acknowledge at the deepest level that as we draw the larger circle to include whatever it is in the energy field, whether it's boisterousness over here and, and, and whatever, that when we draw the larger circle, he drew a circle that shut me out. But Love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. We drew a circle that took in that situation. We drew a circle that acknowledges this situation in our life, this happenstance, even though I don't believe in happenstance. I believe that everything is there for us to learn, to grow, to unfold, and to be miraculous, miraculous human beings. And I think it's great that we're here together, that as long as we are here together, we have work to do. And we can make it joyous, or we can make it not joyous. We can be in balance and harmony, doing things with ease and grace, or not. The choice is ours. And that's why I love our way of life, is that we can choose something higher. We can choose a greater expression. So as we come together today, we acknowledge being in perfect balance. And where are we going? Higher. Higher yet. Where? Higher, Higher yet. And where? Higher, Higher yet. yet. And so it is. God bless you.